All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Troy, for joining us. And I went ahead and invited everybody else in case they have an option to join later, a little bit later. Um, but uh, my name is David Lopez. For those of you who aren't uh, on the introduction earlier, I'm a longtime educator here in the United States. Um, been worked with Microsoft in the original uh, MIE program and even uh, was one of the ones that helped transfer the program from a three ring binder to OneNote. So uh, it was the original version that we, we put together with OneNote along with Robin and uh, several others that are still with Microsoft right now. But um, what we're going to walk through, uh, my role with ScreenBeam is the strategic alliance manager, the senior manager for education um, and for helping kind of shape our education messaging. And a big part of that has been um, has been working with uh, the Microsoft folks here in the US um, and helping in kind of relating that whole education story. Um, and really not about, for me and what we do with Microsoft, it's not necessarily about uh, the folks that we work with showing the device, but it's about how they integrate um, all the other things that you're doing right now on the education side in a mobile agile environment. Um, and so a couple of slides that, um, I'll give you a, a couple of slides that I'm going to share them on my screen here. Um, if I can pull that up, just give me one second. And OK, um, so this slide is is really kind of helps lay lay out uh, the features for um why we're doing what we're doing and about getting teachers out of the front of the classroom um for us in kind of sharing that messaging the need for wireless display uh we see it uh, every every day and we've seen it actually it's been around at least here in the us for a long time um and it, but people have gone about trying to find different ways to do it um, a lot of it started with projectors and some even TVs had some sort of wireless display solution built in. Um, projectors, I think Epson was one of the ones that came out with this. Uh, they had an app earlier on uh, when we started getting started that allowed teachers to do some wireless display. But it, if you walk through that story with a lot of schools who try to use that now and even use it back then, it just never worked right and it never has worked right. And in fact, we've we've run into that several times where those those app based solutions, the infrastructure based solutions uh, just don't work. And so they invest a lot of money in trying to do that. And it was nice to maybe have that as an option. But now that we've gotten to the point where um, districts are finally coming around to recognizing that they absolutely need this kind of technology, they need a solution uh, to be able to make that work reliably. And uh, so for us, it's really about getting teachers out of the front of the classroom and providing them with the right kind of interaction. Uh, wirelessly that fosters creativity for them and for their students and encourages meaningful collaboration. And so using ScreenBeam and using the Windows 10 solution is really a powerful way to kind of have that uh, that conversation with teachers. So the, the first part, um, a big part of what I talk about with with educators. Um, oops, I lost my screen. I don't know why that disappeared, but there we go. Um, what we talk about with educators is this idea of a modern device um, and what a modern device, what a modern classroom is. So we use these tenets of a modern device and a modern classroom, rather, starting with that side on the left, is that it drives better learning outcomes, it fosters 21st century learning skills, um, a modern classroom increases graduation rates and employability, and also encourages collaboration and creativity. So when we look at that, those four tenants are something that's we pull them out specifically because they are common amongst a lot of school districts goals and um, and ideals for what they want their classrooms to be like. And now they're not all the same across all districts everywhere across the world, but I think they're relatable um, in many, many places. And so if you look at the, the core of those or the core of any strategic plan for a district, um, you also look at and should look at what a modern device does to help you accomplish those goals. So what does a modern device do? Well, it offers those kind of applications that give you mobility in the classroom, that give you inking and touch and wireless display. 
that is flexible to meet the needs of teachers and students in the classroom and out of the classroom and also prepares students for college and career opportunities. So that's that's if you pair those two together, it's really a, a powerful story. But when you um, when you look at today's typical classroom and again, I I don't know exactly what you know what you guys are the the classrooms that you're dealing with there in Australia, but here in the US, a lot of what we see in the classrooms is many devices right now. Um, and it's not that they got them all at once. Um, maybe some did. Maybe they've gathered things over the years um, or maybe they just see, you know, I need to have all these things in my classroom in order to function. You'll see things like a desktop computer and a document camera and possibly a laptop. Then maybe a teacher has their tablet that they bring in, they some, something like that. And they have maybe a media switcher or buttons on the wall to switch between all these devices. And maybe they even have an interactive uh, whiteboard um, there in the room. And so they have all this stuff. And in addition to all that, they have cables and, and wires and things that are all connected to make those things work. And so when you see all that, if you saw all that in the classroom, say, oh, look at all the technology that these teachers have. That's one way to look at it. But the question is, why are we still doing that when when there is a possibility of looking at a one device for all scenario and being able to eliminate all those other devices and have a very powerful teaching device like the Surface device or a powerful Windows 10 device with inking and with touch and putting that together with screen beam and saying how do I make and replace all those things and really get rid of and let the technology get out of the way um, and do this. So what we look at is OK, well, if I'm able to do this with a device like the Surface, I can replace my document camera and say, well, how do you do that? Or a visualizer. I know that's something that might might call. I, I can replace my night. Well, if I have a screen beam and I'm connected wirelessly to my screen and again, on the technical side and how you connect to screen beam, I'll let you guys work with Joyce and Albert on that. But it's a simple process. If you've never done it before, you hit Windows K, you hit connect and you're done. Uh, you don't have to configure anything. You don't have to go jump through any hoops to make it work. And this is the same for teachers in doing this. So they can turn, plug it into their screen of their projector and connect. And now if I have my document camera, for example, I can turn on my camera and I can walk around the room and take pictures of students or show picture, live video of students work. I can take a picture of a document that I have, pick up my stylus and immediately start writing on it. I've got a teacher, for example, in Canada, he uh, has his students write on their desks with dry erase markers. And what does he do? Well, he takes his surface, turns on the camera, connects it to the screen beam, walks around and looks at student work and does a quick recording here. But he wants to see, let the rest of the class, what this student is doing and how they solve that problem. Takes a picture of it with the surface, gives the student the pen. The student kind of goes through and explains it and they can all the while be recording this live or they can be doing a screen record or grabbing that content after they're finished or grabbing those pictures, dropping them into a class notebook for that student and having a quick formative assessment of that work. But all of a sudden your, your Surface device and your Windows 10 device, when you're pairing it with screen beam and in a wireless display environment, it becomes much more than just a computer that's sitting in the front of the room. Because a lot of times uh, when you use a device and when you're teaching on using technology, we oftentimes just plug in our devices to the front of the room and that's where they sit. Well, and, and then I'd have to go back and forth to it or I have to use it, but you're really not getting everything out of the device if you're doing it that way. And so a lot of times the Surface team that I work with here in the US, they call it getting one using 100% of your device, 100% of your Surface. Um, and that's what we allow you to do because if you're plugging in your Surface or your Windows 10 device to the front of the room and using it that way, even if you're using a pen and ink and touch with plugged in, you know, it's not that far fetched if you really think about it from using an overhead projector. I mean, in reality, that's really, you don't have the ink on your elbows, but <laughs> if you're just plugging in your device and you're writing on the screen from the front of the room, big deal. I can do that with an overhead projector. But now by turning on my camera, by using things like augmented reality wirelessly, by using uh, mixed reality, um, I can replace all those devices. I can replace my desktop. That's obvious. I replace my tablet. That's obvious. I don't have a media switcher in my room anymore to switch between all these devices you see in the room. I don't have to have an interactive whiteboard because I've got a very powerful whiteboard device in my hands using 
Microsoft Whiteboard. I've got a personal tablet. So I've replaced all those devices. So you immediately open up that conversation with school districts that, look, you possibly maybe the surface costs a little more money, but I can actually figure out how to eliminate all these other devices. And I'm also saving my teacher's instructional time. So I enable myself to do proximity control while I'm using my device. I have a walking digital whiteboard, as we talked about. I don't have to switch between devices um, to do all the work. So let's say I have buttons on the wall or a media switcher that I have to switch between my document camera and my whiteboard and my desktop. That's small little pieces, but I, I do a talk called saving precious milliseconds. And you know what? If I can save several milliseconds and several seconds throughout my day having to switch between different things, that time adds up for teachers. And then the other piece of this is the classroom commander advantage, which we'll talk about in just a minute, which also gives your students the ability to share their screens wirelessly. And you as a teacher more orchestrate that and again, not having to worry about a network connection. So all of this that we've talked about is doing everything on the Miracast protocols, but on an enterprise level that we are doing it um, without connecting anybody to your network. So the third quadrant here is really looking at the cost impact as well, that I immediately get money back when I, uh, I'm getting rid of all those devices. Um, I have fewer installation costs. I have less device, device less devices equals less maintenance. Um, a big piece of this, and this really hits home to the ML, the, the learning, uh, learning consultants role, what you guys are doing, is that my te ed tech training, I can then really be laser focused on the tools that are on my device um, as opposed to things like document camera software and interactive whiteboard software and tab software is on a tablet, on an iPad or something like that. And, and I can really focus on the tools that um, I know my teachers and students are going to use in their college and in their career, they further their careers. And so now I can make sense of, you know, why it's important to focus on all of those things as opposed to, okay, yeah, we're going to spend time on Office 365, but you know what? We've also got to squeeze in whiteboard training for our new smart boards that we bought. And we've also got to squeeze in time for uh, document camera software that, you know, these teachers bought these new, and we've also got to do this and this and this. You're saying, well, let's get rid of all those other things and focus on the tools that we know that they're going to use in here in school and when they leave school and when they go into their careers and as teachers as well, that they also further their careers. So that's a big piece of this as well. And then that idea of the modern classroom experience of untethering the teacher, um, allowing for flexible classroom layouts, uh, the idea of ink back and touch back support, which again, I'll show you a slide that kind of talks about what that is. Uh, that Windows wireless ink experience, being able to move around the room, have your device uh, be flexible with where you are and have that wireless touch capabilities. And then things like even augmented reality. Uh, the tools that are built into Windows 10 are fantastic. I use them all the time when I'm talking about this idea. But if I'm stuck in the front of the room plugged in, those kind of tools, they're a good experience, but all of a sudden it really lights up when I can move my device around the room, go through that AR experience, share that with students, record content. Um, there's all sorts of things that you know that that come about with that. So that those that one slide or really those two slides are things that kind of help tell that story uh, just a little bit. And I'm going to jump to a, another deck here really quickly because I think um, again I'm trying not to take up terrible amount of your time um, on this recording, but um, but that the let me see. Find the right slide. There it is. Um, so, so the the here we go. Um, so the connection, uh, as we talked about, is a really powerful connection, uh, and it's really easy. So there's no native operating system integration, no apps or to install or to learn or manage uh, for your teachers. It's a really simple process, and this slide kind of walks you through. You know, typing Windows K, you get to connect. You click on connect or it goes right to the connect screen. You put in the screen beam device and the, the, the link and you're done. Um, and that's it. You don't have to have any apps to make it work. Um, and so, you know, the idea is shouldn't we be doing this everywhere we go? And absolutely. And I will I will tell you to a person, every MLC that I've worked with here in the US, every SSP, every account executive, once they start presenting wirelessly, 
you never want to go back again to doing it any other way because it just doesn't make any sense. And we should be doing this now. You know, we live in this in the age where we have more computing power in our phones uh, than what took to launch the first, you know, shuttle into orbit, um, a space shuttle into orbit. So there's more computing power here in that phone. So why am I still walking into a room and plugging in my device and standing in the front of the room presenting? It doesn't make any sense. And so our students also expect this. They they stream Bluetooth music to speakers and headphones. They stream HD movies to their phones. Uh, you know, we should be teaching without wires and you should be presenting without wires because it automatically connects you with the audience a lot more as a presenter. And I guarantee you they will ask you that question. How are you doing that? And it's a Windows 10 best case scenario when you talk about what ScreenBeam does and what you're able to do with the ScreenBeam device and how easy it is. And you will wow people a lot of times. They'll be like, well, you don't have permission on our network. How are you doing this in our room? Um, people will be like, well, you said I'm not using your network. You know, I'm not connected. It doesn't really matter because of the power of Windows 10 and ScreenBeam together. Um, so that's one piece of this. The next piece, the idea of, uh, and I'll skip through this slide a little bit, if you want to read it later, but I, I talk about John Hattie and the idea of what constructive feedback is. Uh, but if you are in a situation where you do have touch screens available to you when you're presenting and your school districts that you're working with have touch screens, Windows 10 also enhances that experience when you connect it with the screen beam and wireless display. Because what happens with Windows 10, if you take a look at this and screen beam, uh, is that I can connect my device wirelessly and let's say for example this is a student device that's connected because all my students devices can connect to the front of the room as well and I'm the teacher at the front of the room and I see the student and I want them to share their screen if I have a touch screen in the front of the room you'll notice there's an HDMI cable here plugged in and you'll notice there's also a, um, a USB cable plugged into the screen beam what happens in this case is that there's a protocol built into Windows 10 called UIBC and when I go up to that touch screen in the front of the room as a teacher and I start interacting with that screen, guess what happens when I write on that? All of that content shows up on the student's device wirelessly. So I have wireless touch control and wireless inking even from the front of the room onto that student's device. You cannot do that with any other operating system. It doesn't even exist as a capability, um, especially not a native built in connection. There's no extra software to make this work. It just works inside of Windows 10. And so that is again when you're as an MLC, you're looking at how do we differentiate? How do we set Windows 10 apart? How do we set the Office 365 and the Microsoft story apart? This is one of those things that fits right into that category. And you should be if you're not, you should be doing this not this particular demo, but you should be figuring out ways to integrate this into your uh, the concepts that you're talking with districts about um, and why Windows 10 is a better scenario. Um, when it comes to the third piece of this, we talk about I talked mentioned earlier Classroom Commander, and this is another Windows 10 uh, implementation right now. So you're talking about a one to one scenario where you're connecting all my students along with all the along with the teacher. So you see the screen beam in the front of the room. All the students are now connected to that screen beam with Classroom Commander using the same Miracast protocol. So again, not requiring any network um, to do this, any infrastructure on the on the school district side. Um, and I connect all those students and the teacher, and then the teacher then immediately will be able to see all those student devices using the screen beam, in this case, the screen beam 1000, and um, be able to see all the students' devices but not as a monitoring tool, but as a way to say, you know what, I'm working with these students and they're looking at um, the water cycle and this one particular student, I want to zoom in and take a look at what, what he's doing uh, and take, oh, he's showing groundwater flow. So I push a button and instantly that student's screen is now being shared to the front of the room and I've given them wireless display control, full inking, full mirroring, full touchback, everything transfers to that student device. And as a teacher, I can immediately uh, take back my screen if I want to um, and now I'm back in control. I can continue my lecturing and I can do some other simple powerful things like I can uh, see that if I'm walking around my room and I see that a couple students are off task. I can select their screens 
and lock the mouse and lock the keyboards and put a message on the screen that says, hey, you know, pay attention or whatever um, and give them some of that flexibility. I can I can send out websites to all the student devices. I can open up a program. I can lock all their students devices. I can shut them all down through Classroom Commander. But again, the things that are very simple that teachers need to be able to do in a one to one scenario without having to set up a server, without having to, um, you know, go jump through a lot of hoops technically to make all this happen. I can tell you uh, over and over and over again, I've demonstrated this walking into a boardroom of probably the top 25 district in the country here in the US, plugged in five devices, plugged in the screen beam, connected them, and I was ready to go. Okay, so no other solution outside of uh, something that's already been set up on a server and all is going to be able to do that. And that's again the power of Windows 10 and screen beam working together. So that really, um, gives us you know kind of gives you guys a kind of a good picture of what this is and what it can do now i don't know that you'll be able to i don't know what kind of devices you're working with joyce on uh you know the the one that i've kind of focused on now is our screen beam 1000 which is our flagship device in education um, and it does it built into it is all the capabilities that we've talked about so the wireless display the um us usb touchback support um and the classroom commander is all built into this as a single uh solution um to be able to do that with and so that yeah. that yeah so go ahead joy sorry yeah. i'll let you know. yeah thank you. uh we we gave uh troy and the team uh 960 so uh now okay. they have 960 yeah okay and with the 960 yeah with the 960 uh you know you can also do the classroom commander um it's not i don't know if you have the license for that but that is a possibility uh but if you if if you just do wireless display alone um you're still getting all those advantages from a teacher device perspective and students as well you know you could disconnect and then have a student connect uh what classroom commander gives them is the ability to manage or orchestrate that um that solution really quickly and really easily uh without again having to jump through a lot of uh, hoops to make that yes. work Yes. Um, um, yeah. And in Australia, um, uh, I think we are going to be ready to uh, push the 11, uh, 11 uh, 1000 uh, education, okay. which is under. So, yeah. Okay. So if they want to uh, try out and uh, try out Commander, then uh, we can, we will also out offer the device to them. Okay, great. Yeah, and that that's, that's a really good start with the 960. I mean, I think you'll be very happy with uh being able to use that that device uh troy and and the other folks that are listening to the call um you know and and we've got other scenarios um you know that we we can help walk you through on why this is a powerful uh story together um and i hope that at the very least from this you know this call you're able to see you know the idea of that one device for all scenario um how that can be a powerful message and again not expecting you to take those slides and present those slides as they are but i have i do have microsoft device folks using these slides but so particularly those first two in their normal presentation um, because it does tell that story so well and as you talked about as we talked about when you get rid of all those other devices you've actually inserted yourself into the conversation of a district saying you know what we really could rethink how we do our classrooms. It's not just about the fact that we have to have all these devices, which a lot of districts think they do, but it's about rethinking how you're using those devices. And when you do that, you've inserted yourself into that conversation of not, not just being a training person or a Microsoft person trying to sell Microsoft devices. It's about really what the whole entire classroom is, how the entire classroom is shaped, how the devices are being used, and it really gives extra an extra piece to the puzzle that you guys are already building with them as uh, you know learning consultants. Um, and that's, hey, that's so a hey, really going, good bit um, of it. Yeah, go ahead. Can you, can you guys hear me? Um, so yeah. just uh, please, please keep recording, but in about seven yeah. minutes, I'm going to need to jump off. But I do. Um, yeah, I'm uh, good. Please keep recording and then share the link, and you know we can we can connect with this. Um, but I do have a question. Um, one of the things that we see a lot of, well, at least I see a lot of, is Vuvi. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me what are what are the points of difference with something like Vivi? 
Um, Albert, you know, I, I have, I've seen Vivi, but yeah, Vivi, I... Vivi, yes, Vivi is uh, uh, another wireless display uh, in Australia. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, is it an infrastructure is, based or is it Miracast based? Do you know, Albert? Yeah, so the uh, we are, uh, Miracast, because uh, <coughs> we are using the Miracast uh, technology, so even uh, without any like a Wi Fi environment, and then we still can work about. And also, uh, talking about a uh, Miracast, because this is uh, a point to point uh, solution, so we get a better and uh, while. Uh, Bandwidth, then the, the video or media streaming, uh, the performance would definitely be better. So, but uh, uh, speaking about uh, the Vivid, the Vivid, they are the, the uh, they are kind of the solution, and then uh, everything we need to go through the infrastructure network. So, okay. uh, definitely, yeah, we got a song like a network construction, something like that, and then uh, or. Even in Taiwan, uh, we use the, the, the solution in the, uh, the school. They also uh, quite impressed about the, the, the performance, the video or like a video streaming performance because uh, nowadays lots of the, the, the materials, the, the education materials may use that uh, in, the, in the classroom. But okay. uh, maybe, yeah, definitely not yeah. like this kind of the, the solution. Okay. Take yeah, so yeah, uh, that's good. So yeah, so to overview what he said, um, Vivi is an infrastructure based solution. And I will tell you almost certainly when I, I start this out because it's a really basic understanding. If you try to do extended screen mode with something like Vivi, just something basic like extended screen, uh, meaning like I want to share, I want to do a Kahoot, but then I want I don't want the students to see my screen, so I want to keep my screen good while I'm sharing the rest of the screen or I'm doing presenter view in PowerPoint. You can't even do that with an infrastructure based solution like Vivi. And because we are a native connection on across multiple operating systems, we can do all those things really easily. And so that's one basic difference is that, like Albert said, we're not using up bandwidth. If the network goes down, our stuff still works. Um, yeah. If so goes it, down. It requires, yeah, it also requires apps. Yeah, and it requires an app to work. And again, we are a native connection, so it doesn't require extra training to make that work. So, so uh, with, so without the, the infrastructure thing, does that mean that the pricing for Screen Beam is going to be a lot lower? Um, no, I don't know how it compares. Actually, Vivid is it uh, it's um, it's more it's much more than Screen Beam. Yeah. Yes, yeah, two or three okay. times more. Yeah, Vivi's more expensive. So yeah, um, so yeah. So I mean, you're you're talking about being able to talk to your customers about a solution that again is integrated into Windows 10. It's you know we're a co-engineering partner with Microsoft, so we're not one of these same people that says, oh, you know, we're a Microsoft certified you know gold partner. We're actually working on a regular basis with the Surface team, with the Win operating systems team. Um, integrated very heavily with what you know Microsoft is doing and on future you know developments of, of technologies in the operating system um, and things like touchback that I showed you that would not have happened in the Windows operating system if we were not you know part of that conversation um, and things like it's it's in the surface hub that touchback support the reason that's there is because we you know we kind of built and uh, you know this idea behind why that's a valuable solution. Um, and so yeah, so we're definitely you know in a different category of something like Vivi. Um, you know, and that's you can't walk into a, a classroom with a Vivi device and automatically connect it like we can with ours because again that takes network set up. You have to go through the process, download an app, you know, and get to that point um, to make it work. So okay, if you sure. see a lot of that, um, that's, another, you know. Yeah, sure. Um, another question then is um, how prolific is Screen Beam in Australia now? Like, is it is is this something that with you, you've seen in a lot of schools, Joyce? Is it certain mm -hmm. states? Where, where are you guys at? Uh, well, our, our, uh, we have uh, uh, we have sales rep in uh, based in uh, Sydney and also a technician in Sydney, but uh, the the main team is based in Taipei. It's based in Taiwan, um, and uh, uh, because I just um, you know uh, 
uh, start to look after Australia um, uh, just a few months ago. But uh, previously, um, I think we do have um, uh, quite a lot of school uh, using uh, screen being. Um, so um, yeah, I think um, uh, if you, I think we do have one uh, case study uh, can share with you. Uh, but uh, basically now I think um, uh, some of school already know, already know screen being is not uh, uh, so. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. certain the exposure in the country. Yeah, there's a lot okay, of our cool. older pro there's a lot of our older products uh, that are out there and a lot of them still yeah. work. But, you know, what we're doing right now with the 1000 and with Classroom Commander is, uh, you know, it's a whole new evolution of the product. Um, and so yes. again, yes. I hope you, I hope you see I hope you Troy, I hope I know you have to go, but I hope you see the value of what we're doing here and how we're you know, how we're building this. Yeah, message. For, sure, for sure. You know what, uh, what I what I think is going to be worthwhile is um, uh, like I'm happy to jump off and you guys keep recording, but I, I think yeah. the best thing to do, right, is I think you've given us an overview here. I think we pause the recording and then what we'll do is I'll get the other guys to make sure they listen to this and then break their stuff because we've all got it in the box and we've all been talking, right? We've been waiting for this call. You know, what was that you sent me, Troy, that kind of thing. Um, we'll break it out. We'll have a bit of a play and then maybe reconvene with you with you guys or with Joyce um, to then talk us through any other, you know, any of the things, other things that you think are important. Do this in stages rather than have these guys listen to a sort of a one hour call. I think that's going to yeah. be more doable and more mm. lasting in terms of its impact on us as a team. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And and again, if you uh, the Screen Beam Experts program that we've got going on, you know, a bunch of those folks that are on our Screen Beam Experts program, they'll vouch for what we do. Uh, they are in the, their experts as well as MLCs. You know, so we've, we've got a lot of uh, content and resources on the education side that we can certainly share with you um, as well. Yes. Yeah, that sounds yes. good. I, um, yeah, after the call, uh, yeah, we, we will share with you uh, the webinar recording and uh, also we, we do also have an education block and which has a lot of uh, material and uh, articles from the educator and our screen being expert. And yep. uh, we will share all this to you so 